welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. I've got a really fun video for you today that I have been promising for forever. So I'm sorry it's delayed, but it's finally here and I am so excited to share it with you. I'm going to be showing you my five favorite meals to make at home. Well, yeah. They're like, I have a lot of favorite meals, but here are five of my favorite meals to make at home. I'm gonna be walking you through step-by-step step how to make them so that hopefully you can make these at home. I know that a lot of us are stuck inside right now and we have nothing but time, so if you've been looking for some new recipes, I hope this gives you some ideas. If you follow me on Instagram, which if you're not following me on Instagram, hop on over. If you like this video, I have a couple of highlights that I think you will really enjoy. Also, I... I'm on there all the time, constantly, forever. <laughs> but if you follow me there, you see that John and I cook just about every single night. I say up all of my meals to my meals highlight for you. I have a cooking highlight in there that I think you'll really enjoy if you haven't seen it already. I definitely know there is a lot of wiggle room in these recipes. I will let you know if there is something that you can substitute or if there's something that you should not substitute. But please know that I, I'm not the kind of person who is gonna measure out every ingredient. I will have the information for the recipes on screen for you as well as in the description box and so make sure you check there for info. I really want to make it clear that you do not have to follow every single thing I do for every step of the recipes that I'm sharing with you. I'm just sharing them with you and telling you the way that I like to make them. This is how I do it, but please do it however you want to do it. Hopefully I give you a really good guideline to follow and you can get creative with it if you want to. Substitute when you can. I'll let you know when you can and can't substitute with the recipes and hopefully we just have fun. All right, meal number one is one of my favorite meals. I'm excited just talking about it. You can probably guess it. I showed you guys how to make this in teacher vlog number six, which I now refer to as the carbonara vlog. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make carbonara at home. John and I first tried carbonara when we were on our honeymoon in Italy, so it is really special to me, but it is also just so different and delicious. There are not a lot of people that I know at least that make carbonara. So definitely is something that you can use to impress people, but it is just one of the most rich, delicious pasta dishes out there. Also, John and I played with so many recipes until we found the easiest, best, most reliable way to make pasta carbonara. And that's the version that I'm gonna share with you today. It is simple, even though some people can make it complicated, it does not have to be that way. You are going to love this pasta dish. I feel like I'm obligated to say here, the key to this dish is going to be fresh Parmesan. Oh my goodness. We tried to make this with um, shredded Parmesan, the kind that you get in the bag. And let me just tell you guys, it was a huge epic fail. It's not going to work because that shredded cheese that you get that's in a bag is processed and coated with something on it that makes it impossible to get the consistency that you need for carbonara. So this is one ingredient that you can't substitute. You do have to grate fresh Parmesan for this dish. Um, I know Trader Joe's has really good prices on Parmesan wedges. But that's the only thing about this dish. You need fresh Parmesan but I promise you it's so worth it. <laughs> So here's everything you need. We're gonna start with vermicelli. We always use vermicelli instead of spaghetti. It just tastes better. The next thing is Parmesan cheese. This has to be fresh cheese, like I said. Then we're gonna use some eggs, and just trust me on this, I know it's weird, but this is what makes the pasta creamy. Finally, pancetta. If you don't have pancetta, that's okay. You can totally substitute this for bacon. Um, pancetta is just how it is typically made. You're also going to need garlic. Fresh garlic, of course, is always better. But if you just have the pre-minced garlic, that's totally okay too. We use it all the time. So the very first thing that you're going to do, obviously, is get some water boiling. So that's what I'm doing. We are going to be using the pasta water after our pasta has cooked, so one little tip I have is to set some kind of cup near your pasta pot, that way you don't forget you need to get pasta water, that way you don't accidentally drain it all. While your pasta water is waiting to boil, we're going to grate some cheese. So I'm just cutting off a few pieces so that they fit into my little cheese grater here if you like it. I do have one in my Amazon storefront for you. I think it is so comfortable and so easy to use. So I'm just grating about one and a half to two cups. That's usually how much cheese we like. Two cups is kind of more on the cheesier side for two people. So this time I ended up just doing one and a half cups. But if you're making this dish for more people, definitely use more cheese, of course. 
when your pasta is boiling, you're gonna make sure um, first that you salt your water. Make sure it's really, really salty. Normally I do this before, but I forgot. So make sure you salt your water and then you're gonna add in your pasta. We're using vermicelli. That's just what we really, really like. Um, we pretty much never use spaghetti for anything. So vermicelli it is. <laughs> and you're gonna go ahead and heat up a pan with some olive oil. This is what we're gonna cook our pancetta in, so give it a little bit of a swirl, wait for it to heat up, and add your pancetta. So pancetta is typically what is used when you make carbonara. Um, if you can't find it, if you can't get your hands on it, you can absolutely substitute it with bacon, but this is how it's typically made and this is the way that we like to make it. I also like to add in some fresh cracked pepper. I always use fresh pepper in my dishes. I promise you it does make a difference. So we're cooking this on about medium heat. While that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and get our cheese and egg mixture ready. So I've got my cheese, I've got my eggs. I'm gonna actually crack in two full eggs, whites and everything, but the third egg, I'm only gonna add the yolk in and that's just for me. I feel like it makes it a more stable sauce. So some people just make this with only yolks and it gives it a really pretty color, but I like it better when I have some egg whites and some yolks in there. Um, and again, these eggs are gonna be cooked, but this is what makes it super, oops, a shell, super, super creamy. The eggs are so important to this dish. So make sure that you keep an eye on your pancetta so it doesn't burn. Also at this stage, you wanna go ahead and add the garlic because the pancetta is almost done. Here I am just mixing up my cheese and egg mixture and getting it ready to add into our dish later. Here's a peek at what the mixture looks like. Sometimes it's a bit thicker if I use more cheese, but today this is what it looks like. <laughs> also make sure you're keeping an eye on that pasta. You don't wanna overcook it. We like ours al dente, but of course cook your pasta however you wanna cook your pasta, however you like it done. Just make sure you give it a taste. And do not forget to reserve some pasta water. This is going to be essential when we make our sauce later, promise. So the holes in our strainer are actually kind of big so our pasta would slide through it. So here is my husband draining the pasta with a plate. While he does that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some pepper to our cheese and egg mixture. Pepper is the only seasoning other than salt that we're gonna be using in this recipe. I like a lot of pepper. I'm a very pepper-loving girl, but just add however much pepper you like, or you can save it till the end. All right, at this point, our pancetta is done. I did forget to add the garlic today. I'm so sorry I forgot. Just add it when I said earlier, or when I mentioned in the recipe. But now, our heat is off for this pan, and we're just gonna dump all of our vermicelli noodles into the same dish our pancetta is in. And what we're gonna do is coat those noodles, give them lots of love with that pancetta and the grease that's in there from the pancetta. And at this point, all that's left to do for your carbonara is to stir. We're just gonna be stirring for the rest of the recipe. You're gonna add in a little bit of your egg and cheese mixture, which my camera died, so I'm sorry you didn't see that. Um, but you're just gonna add it in little by little and mix it up really, really well in that warm pan with that hot pasta. That is going to cook your egg. So don't worry about a raw egg or anything. So once you have all of your egg and cheese mixture incorporated, it should start to look Look like this and at this point if your pasta does not look creamy enough add some of your pasta water that is where the magic comes in more than likely you are going to need to add some pasta water to your dish to give it that creaminess at this point I did taste the pasta and I added a bit more salt you shouldn't need too much salt because you have the cheese and also your pasta water should be salted pretty heavily but I decided it needed just a pinch more and that's it so I usually just serve this up in bowls and if I'm being honest we usually don't have veggies when we make it but you totally should <laughs> and then I just crack some pepper add some parsley I didn't have fresh parsley today but that's totally okay that's how you make pasta carbonara I love carbonara so much, but the one thing about this dish is it's not necessarily something that you want to eat reheated, so the leftovers of this dish are not gonna be good, so I would just make however much you are going to eat in that night, plus maybe like a little bit more because you're probably gonna want seconds, but this is not one of those dishes that tastes really good reheated. <laughs> 
Number two is fajitas. I realize that people already know how to make fajitas. I'm just gonna show you the way that I do it, but I especially wanted to include it in this video because it's something that John and I eat all the time with our leftovers. So today we're gonna be making it with some steak. We're gonna go through and marinate it and everything, but please know that most of the time that we make fajitas, it's with leftover chicken, okay? So if you have leftover chicken or steak and you're like, I don't know what to do with this, it's kind of boring and kind of plain, make it into fajitas. That's what we do, or stir fry. Here's the thing, I also love this dish because it's one of those dishes that you can prep ahead for. You can have all of your ingredients ready to go so that when you get to cooking, it's really easy, really simple, and really fun. And it's also one of those dishes that you can be really flexible with. So you can use chicken breast, you can use chicken thighs, you can use steak, whatever you have, it's gonna go good with fajitas, you know? So for this meal, we did actually prep ahead. So here is us making the marinades. We used chili powder, cumin, which honestly, I don't really like cumin that much, red pepper, chipotle chili, cayenne pepper, some minced garlic, and some lime juice. This is how we have our bowl set up. It's kind of the easiest way for us to do this. So we're adding about a half a cup of chili powder, about a cup of olive oil, and I think John was going for around half a cup of lime juice here. We are making fajitas, so definitely need some lime. About a teaspoon of cayenne, a teaspoon of red pepper, and two teaspoons of chipotle flakes, because those are absolutely delicious. And then just way more garlic than you think you need. Garlic is just the best ingredient ever to me. Then of course, some salt and pepper. And this is what it looks like at this point. John is letting me add the cumin to it because like I said, I don't really love cumin. So if there's too much in there and it overpowers it, I just won't eat it. I know cumin is an essential ingredient to fajitas. So we still put a little bit in, but I'm not generous at all. This is what we're using. It's tri-tip. We got a really good deal on it, but a lot of times we use leftovers. So this is us just making sure that the meat is being covered in the marinade and into the fridge she goes. Next up to prep is onions and peppers. So these are just the peppers that we used. Of course, use whatever peppers you like. We also found that one of our peppers had a little baby pepper inside. Look how cute she is. Adorable. Anyways, we're throwing all of our preparations into one of these containers. John's slicing onions for the fajitas, but he's also dicing onions for my eggs in the morning because I really like onions in my eggs. Totally unrelated to this video, but <laughs> into the fridge these go. And let's fast forward to the next day. So sometimes I just microwave the tortillas like 30 seconds before we're ready to eat, but if I can remember, I do just throw them in the oven in foil wraps because they stay hot way longer. So yeah, this is me showing you how I do that. And then of course my favorite side dish is broccoli. This is frozen broccoli, just drizzled a little bit of olive oil on. I'm seasoning this with salt, pepper, of course plenty of garlic and a little bit of onion powder too. This is just the basic seasoning that we use whenever we cook broccoli. Now we're gonna cook our meat. Again, sometimes we use leftover meat for fajitas, but we really, really wanted to cook this tri-tip. So whatever meat you have, go ahead and cook that. This is how we cook our tri-tip. We like to cook it in a cast iron skillet, super, super high heat, and get a really nice sear on it. So for this one, I think we cooked it maybe three and a half to four minutes, just enough to get this sear on one side, and we're gonna flip it over and transfer it into the oven and it's gonna cook for about 20 or so minutes. So I put the broccoli in the same time that the steak goes in because our broccoli, if we cook it from frozen like this, usually takes 20 minutes too. Next thing we're gonna make is yellow rice. I love having yellow rice with my fajitas. It's just something that I like and that I do. So if you wanna make it, follow the instructions on the bag. So I'm gonna let it simmer. I'm also adding in the tortillas into the oven so they get nice and warm. 
So fast forward into the future, our rice is done. She's cooked pretty nicely. I'm just kind of fluffing her up with my spoon. And now we're gonna heat up our pan and cook our veggies. So we're using a lot of the same seasonings that we used um, in our marinade. So cayenne, red pepper, chili powder, and chipotle flakes, my absolute favorite. Then we're gonna add some oil into a hot pan and add our, I'm calling it a veggie pack. We're adding all of the peppers and the onions into the skillet, give it a nice little mix up. So at this point we are seasoning everything. I do like to go pretty heavy on my seasonings. Again, I don't have an exact amount. I just kind of throw it all in there. And the only thing I have to say is just be careful about cayenne pepper if you've never used that before. Cayenne definitely sneaks up on you. <laughs> Also, I forgot to say, we did add just normal salt and pepper. And this is me trying to show John how to be like fancy. This is definitely a joke. <laughs> so we did take our tri-tip out of the oven and we let it rest for a little while before we cut into it. I just want to make that clear. So this is us cutting up the tri-tip. There is a very specific way to cut tri-tip. I'm not going to get into that. Um, but basically you cut it where we cut it <laughs> and then you have to cut kind of like the opposite direction. I don't know if that made any sense, but just look at this. Look how delicious this cut of steak looks. This is my absolute, absolute favorite steak in the entire world. And again, Many times we have made this dish with just leftover chicken or leftover steak, but this time we're using tri-tips. So here I am adding garlic into our veggies because they are almost done. Always add garlic towards the end because you don't want it to burn. And guess what, you guys? The whole meal came together just like that. I feel like it took a really long time to explain this, but this is actually a super quick and super easy dinner, and we make it absolutely all the time. So here she is. Also, here's John cooking his jalapenos. I can't, I can't do the spice that he can do, but yeah, he loves that. And I also just really wanted to share, this is how I like to set up my tortilla. I love to eat the yellow rice with it. And then fast forward to when we're actually eating this, we of course add cheese, so don't forget cheese. Dish number three is Italian sausage pasta. And you guys, this is, this is my, I love carbonara, but this is like my favorite pasta. I cannot get enough of it. We actually made it for dinner tonight and I'm really looking forward to eating it for lunch tomorrow. So this definitely, if you try one thing from this video ASAP, I definitely, definitely say try this recipe because it is so good. Oh my gosh. I love this dish because for one, it's got incredible flavor. For two, it is really easy. And for three, it's definitely one of those dishes that tastes really good still, reheated, which I just mentioned. It's also just a really filling, complete meal. Like I always feel so full and good after it. It does have spinach, and I know a lot of you have told me before that you don't necessarily like cooked spinach, but I promise you there is so much flavor in this dish, you are not gonna taste it. And if you're someone who's like, well, I don't really like the texture of cooked spinach, just chop up your spinach a little bit more, maybe use a little bit less. I use an insane amount of spinach when I cook this because I want to try to make it as healthy as I can. Who am I kidding, right? But just chop up your spinach a little bit more, use a little bit less. I promise you, you're not going to notice it and it's still going to be really delicious. And this is one of those dishes that you can prep ahead for. So when you're cooking it smooth sailing, prep your onions, prep your peppers, prep your cheese, and you are good to go. Here's everything you need for Italian sausage pasta. So of course you need Italian sausage, spinach, you'll also need a red pepper, an onion, also garlic, regular or minced, whatever you have. Then you need orchetti. You can substitute with whatever pasta, but this one is the best to me. And then Parmesan. So this is about how much Parmesan we're using for this dish, you can probably guess, but it's gonna be about a cup and a half of Parmesan. Like I said, that's usually our go-to whenever we're making dishes just for us. So you wanna go ahead and get some pasta water boiling, make sure you have plenty of water, make sure you salt your water pretty heavily. I'm telling you guys, you need to salt your water like way more than you would think. If you know you're gonna be making this dish ahead of time, definitely cut your veggies beforehand, but here we are, we're just slicing peppers and then we're dicing onions. I do like diced onions in this dish as opposed to sliced onions. 
We're also doing fresh garlic for this dish. Again, you can use minced if that's the only thing you have. And now I want to show you the absolute best way ever to get sausage out of its casing. I love this Italian sausage, it's so good. So what I'm doing here is I have hot water running and then the casing literally just falls away from the sausage. I'm telling you, I will never remove the casing by slicing again. Here's a close up. All I'm doing is just sliding the casing down it comes right off, you guys. It's like magic. I don't know why more people don't know about this. I don't know why more people don't do it like this, but it is literally so easy. So yeah, I'm just using this sausage because it's the sausage that I like the best, but if you can find sausage that is already um, like ground up and not in casing, that obviously works too. So for this pasta, I'm using orecchetti. This pasta, you guys, is my favorite pasta. I'm telling you, you can substitute. Definitely you can substitute with penne. I've made it like that before when I didn't have this. But I'm telling you, this pasta is perfect for this dish. It just hugs the sausage so beautifully. It's just, it's just perfect. So I know they sell it at Walmart. Try to pick it up if you can. Um, at this point, we are going ahead and adding oil into a hot pan, cooking up our onions first because they take the longest. When they start to brown is when you want to go ahead and add your peppers in. Again, you don't have to add peppers if you don't want to, but I feel like it just adds that extra something. So I'm making sure that this is all incorporated. She's looking really pretty. And now I'm adding in my sausage. I did try to crumple it up a little bit because we don't have a meat masher and using my spatula to um, separate the sausage doesn't always work the best. I just keep forgetting to buy a meat masher. That's really the tool that would be appropriate for this job, but it gets easier to break up as it cooks. So now I'm just adding in some freshly cracked pepper. Once again, freshly cracked pepper is way better than just the sprinkly kind that you can buy. And again, don't forget to keep an eye on your pasta. When it's done, you wanna make sure you don't forget to reserve some of your pasta water. Definitely more than I did here. I didn't, I didn't pull enough. <laughs> um, and we also drained it way too well. So here's me using our spatula to get our strainer because I can't reach it. Um, but when you do this, I wouldn't drain like 100% of the water. John just kind of dumped it all in. That's okay. <laughs> um, and at this point, this is what our sausage looks like. So she's pretty much done cooking. We're going to add in the very important step of our garlic. And once again, we're adding it in at the end so it does not burn. <laughs> And then you just want to make sure that you incorporate it really nicely, um, cook it for like 30 seconds or so, and then go ahead and add your spinach. Again, I, I add so much spinach to these kinds of dishes because the spinach cooks down so much, you guys, I promise you, add way more than you think. And again, if you're someone who doesn't like spinach, chop it up a little bit more, use a little bit less. I definitely recommend trying it with some spinach though. So sometimes I do just kind of stir the spinach in and let it cook down, other times I cover it. This is one of those times, oh, Tesla, where it's just easier to stir. So now I'm putting pasta water back into the pasta that was drained a little bit too well. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my cheese mixture. Nothing else but cheese and mix that up. You can kind of see here it is a little bit dry. That's kind of okay because our sausage has some fat that's going to be incorporated in, which is the next step. Once your spinach is all cooked down, you want to go ahead and add what's in your sausage pan into your pasta pot and you're going to mix that together really, really well. Once it's mixed, I do like to add in some more seasoning. So I'm adding in some pepper, a pinch of salt. You don't need too much. Also some chipotle chili flakes, my absolute favorite. I promise you this is one of the things that really, really makes the dish. And then also one of my favorite things to add in is some Cajun seasoning, which if you do not have, highly recommend that you pick it up. It definitely takes this dish to a whole other level. And of course some red pepper and if you don't like any of these seasonings you can definitely leave them out but this is just the blend that I really really like to use so I'm gonna go ahead and incorporate all of that and at this point our dish is pretty much done and this is one of those dishes like I said that just feels like a really really satisfying meal so this is what she looks like this is how much we actually made I love these containers by Rubbermaid you can find them in my Amazon storefront they are the only Tupperware containers that you'll ever see me use because they're just so good so shameless plug 
Dish number four is our pineapple teriyaki boats, and this this is kind of like our showstopper, guys. She is so cute, and she's super, super good. This is one of those things I make, and I just feel like a total chef. This is just one of those dishes that's really fun to look at. It's great for like a little date night if you want to make things a little bit more special. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Dish number four is, I'm gonna call it our showstopper. It's our pineapple teriyaki chicken boat. And I love this dish. It is so much fun to make. And she is really, really cute to look at, you guys. Let's just be honest here. I love this dish. It's a really fun way to kind of feel like a chef <laughs> and also to impress people. So if you've got a little date night you wanna have, this dish is perfect. So I know that cutting a pineapple can seem really intimidating, but I promise you guys I'm gonna walk you through it. It's actually super easy. You can save all of the pineapple that you get out of there, eat it for later. Warm it up in your oven, it is so good that way. And actually that's one of the sides for this dish is cooked pineapple, so it, it just works out. So we are going to start off with some white rice, also some cornstarch. I also have white wine vinegar here. You can also use rice vinegar, we've done that too. Teriyaki sauce and soy sauce and some sesame oil. And then also some red pepper, some ground ginger, and some sesame seeds. These are for garnishing. Um, fresh garlic, if you have it, is great. If you don't, that's okay. Minced garlic works just as well and then green onions are also for garnishing and then of course our pineapple Also, I wanted to share I'm loving these stasher bags especially for raw foods and like thawing out meat So if you have a rice cooker, of course use that that is easier If not, we're just gonna do a ratio of one cup of rice to two cups of water or however much rice that you need to make So all you're going to do is get your water boiling then add just like a little bit of butter to it And then add your rice cover and simmer on low for 15 to 20 minutes um, again, I'm preparing my broccoli straight out of the bag. I love using frozen broccoli because it is super easy and super, super convenient. So again, all I do is I drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there. And lately, we've actually been using this Garlic Lovers seasoning from Flavor God. It's really, really good. I'll have the link if you want to try out some Flavor God seasonings. So just going to pop that into a 400 degree oven. And this is our rice cooking. <laughs> So for this recipe, I am just using chicken breast tenderloins because that's what we keep on stock in our house all the time. Um, but you can definitely use whatever you want to use. Whether you want to use chicken thighs, that would be really good. If you just have normal breasts, you can cut those up. This is just what we keep. So I am going to cut these up, wash my hands, and then season them with just a basic salt and pepper. Our sauce is where most of our flavor is going to come from. Now it's time to cook the chicken, so heat up a pan. I am using ghee for this. Ghee is used in a lot of Asian recipes. It's just kind of like a different form of butter, but it's not required. You can definitely use olive oil. I just like to use ghee with this. Um, and I'm just gonna throw that chicken in once that ghee has melted up and cook her. Okay, now for our pineapple. This is the line that you want to cut. We are cutting it lengthwise. Um, also make sure that you rip off your tag. For me, I like to start at the bottom of my pineapple and get my knife in there. We have okay knives. If you have a super sharp knife, this will be a lot easier. And I'm just going to work my way down towards the crown. But what I focus on first is just cutting the main pineapple. So here I'm checking to make sure that I'm actually going through the pineapple, which I need to cut just a little bit more. So I'm just going to apply a little bit more pressure and completely separate the pineapple. Then I worry about the crown. So you can see here that I cut a little bit off center. Hopefully you'll do better than I did this time, but that's totally okay. All you're going to do is just work your knife through very carefully. Again, you do need a sharp knife to do this. Please be careful when you're cutting. Um, it is actually relatively easy to do this part, but oh my goodness, that's so uneven. <laughs> Make sure you keep an eye on your chicken, give that a stir every once in a while. Um, for the rest of the pineapple, we are just going to carve out the center. So I actually like to cut through the core right here. This is just the easiest way for me. So I just start and work my way through and I'm pushing my knife deep, but I'm not going through the pineapple. And then I'm making another cut 
on the edge of the pineapple. I'm going to be cutting on both edges and we're just going to carve out a little rectangle basically. So when you do this, you want to make sure you do get pretty close to that edge because you want to have enough space in your pineapple to actually put your food in, which is another point to this. You definitely should use this with larger pineapples. If you have smaller pineapples, it is going to be a bit harder to fit your food in. So now I'm just connecting the edges of our rectangle together. Again, I'm using decent pressure, but I'm kind of feeling with the tip of my knife for the back of that pineapple skin. So I'm making sure not to go through the pineapple. And then I'm making little cuts inside of our rectangle. This is a great lesson on fractions, I feel like. And this is just gonna make it easier for when we remove all of those little chunks. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take a spoon and kind of scoop out the chunks. This does take a little bit of wiggling, so yeah, if you, kind of rotate your pineapple you can manipulate it and the chunks will come out easier I hope that makes sense I am just transferring them directly to a baking sheet because I'm using them as a side in this dish but you can do whatever you want with your pineapple so when you pull your chunks of pineapple out you are going to notice there is a lot of juice at the bottom and please make sure that you save this juice we're actually going to put it in our teriyaki sauce to add more of a pineapple flavor so I'm not sure where the clip went of me adding in the liquid ingredients, but it's really, really simple. I promise you I just threw them in. So I usually do 50-50 soy sauce and teriyaki sauce. Um, so it can be anywhere from a quarter cup each to half a cup each of soy sauce and teriyaki sauce. Then I add a couple splashes of rice vinegar or white wine vinegar, either one is fine. Some sesame oil um, and then some ginger. I'm also adding pineapple juice to this recipe, like I said. Some people add brown sugar to to their teriyaki I was just trying to keep it out so you can do that if you want to when all of your ingredients are in you want to crank the heat up you want it to be bubbling like this so that it can reduce down and this is something that just takes time so keep it on high let it bubble it will reduce down meanwhile I am chopping up some garlic to add in so yeah <laughs> I'm adding this in and I'm letting it reduce down just a little bit more you can see it's starting to thicken just a little bit so you're going to notice your sauce changes color, it's going to get a little bit darker, a little bit thicker, and at that point I usually just go ahead and turn my burner down to low and just kind of let it work for a few more minutes. So at this point our rice is done, this is what she looks like. We also have our pineapple boats ready, you can see what I did with that little piece that came off. Our pineapple went in the oven with our broccoli at 400 degrees, I'm really just warming it. And now we're going to make a cornstarch slurry. So I didn't have a lot of um, teriyaki or sauce really, so I only used probably about a teaspoon of cornstarch and then I just added about the same amount of water, maybe a little bit more would be better, and I'm just mixing this up. And this is going to help thicken our sauce a little bit more. So if you made more chicken and you had more sauce, I would use a little bit more cornstarch and a little bit more water when you do this because um, you have a lot more sauce that you need to thicken. For me, I didn't really need it that much. So this is what she looks like. Also very important to note, you cannot just add the cornstarch directly in. Don't do that because it'll get clumpy and gross. Okay, so now for the garnishes, I am just quickly chopping up some green onions. Again, these are totally optional. You honestly don't even taste them, but I think it just makes the dish a little bit more fun. For plating, all we're going to do is grab our pineapple. I like to scoop in rice so that it looks prettier in the pineapple bowl, and then you're just going to fill the rest of it with your yummy teriyaki chicken and sprinkle on some sesame seeds. Again, totally optional, but super, super fun. And garnish with green onions and parsley if you have it. Also a lime wedge and another little sprig of parsley helps tie the whole thing together. And that's how you make pineapple teriyaki chicken boats. Dish number five is spinach bacon and tomato pasta. I love this dish. I make it all the time. If you follow me on Instagram, you're probably tired of seeing it, but it is so, so good. And I've got to say the key component to this dish is the bacon. If you watched my last day in the life vlog, I, I spilled the bacon and the onions and I had to eat it without the bacon and it just wasn't the same. So you cannot substitute the bacon in this recipe. I mean, you can, but what really makes it for me is the bacon in this. I promise you guys are gonna love it and here's how you make it.
So this is everything you need for spinach, bacon, and tomato pasta. I am starting, of course, with spinach. You also need penne or whatever pasta you like, some cheese, some half and half, garlic, tomatoes, and bacon. So the way that we cook our bacon is we line a baking sheet with foil and then cook it on a cooling rack. Um, this is just what works for us, so cook your bacon however you want to. This is something that you can also prepare ahead. So, Or you can use leftover bacon for it, honestly. It doesn't make a difference. So we're just throwing that in to cook and I'm going to start chopping up tomatoes. You can use canned tomatoes for this recipe, um, but I just like to use fresh tomatoes whenever possible. I'm going to go ahead and get our water boiling. Of course, as always, make sure that your water is super, super salty. And we're going to multitask and grate our cheese. You guys have seen me do this a hundred times. So there it is, one and a half cups of cheese. Um, this is just a proportion that works for us. Again, use however much cheese you feel is appropriate. Now we're going to cut up some fresh garlic. Again, if you only have the pre-minced kind, that'll work great. This just adds a little bit extra intense flavor and our water is boiled. Okay, so I'm adding in penne pasta. You can use whatever pasta you like. I really like using penne for this dish though. Um, rotini works pretty well too. Our bacon is done, it looks great, and we're gonna go ahead and season our chicken. So for this, I am using a different seasoning. I have salt, pepper, thyme, oregano, also some basil. I don't really measure my seasonings, um, but this is about how much I put for each one of those. I definitely recommend that you just play with it. So our pasta at this point is almost done, and we're gonna start cooking our chicken. I wait till my pasta is done before I cook my chicken for this dish. So I just have a little bit of oil in there, and we are cooking her up. After you drain your pasta, make sure you save some pasta water, and here I am just temp checking our chicken. We definitely wanna go for 165, that's when you know your chicken is done. This will cook just a little bit more, so if it's just under, if it's like 160 or so, you'll be okay. It is going to continue to cook a little bit more, but I just felt I should mention that in case there's any new chefs out there. So in that same pan that we cooked our chicken in, we are going to add our tomatoes, all those flavors are gonna to come together and be nice and beautiful and delicious. So our tomatoes are gonna cook for just a little while. We're just gonna get a little bit of color on them and then we're going to add in an insane amount of spinach. I promise you this cooks down. It is a big part of this dish. You can leave it out. It won't be the exact same, but I definitely like to load up on the spinach. And in the Italian pasta recipe, I did fold in the spinach. But for this one, because the tomatoes are so fragile, I'm just covering and letting the spinach cook down. So this is what our spinach looks like after cooking down for maybe a minute or two. It cooks down really, really quickly. And at this point, I am going to add in the garlic. The spinach still does need to cook down a little bit more, but this is a really good time to go ahead and add that garlic into your dish. Once that garlic is in, I do stir carefully so I don't break the tomatoes. And once again, you guys, I don't know why whenever I add sauces to my pan, my camera decides to cut out or I lose the footage. All I did was add in half a cup to a cup of half and half. Oh, and then I added in just a little bit of pasta water. I still saved some for the end though, just in case we need it. I brought that up to a boil and then I just added in my cheese, turned the heat down a little bit and just mixed that cheese in. You can substitute with um, shredded Parmesan or the sprinkle kind of Parmesan. I've done that before, it totally works fine. And then we are going to add in our pasta to this mixture and get it nice and coated. Um, when you do this, you wanna make sure, of course, that you stir really well and it kind of helps the flavors if you just let the pasta sit in the sauce for a little bit before you serve it. So I'm just mixing this up really, really nicely. If you want it to be more creamy, you can add more of that pasta water that we saved. But at this point, she is finished. All right, you guys, those are the five recipes that I wanted to share with you this time. I do have a couple other favorite recipes because John and I do cook every single night. And if you're someone who feels like they're not that creative in the kitchen, I definitely recommend planning out your meals. That's something that we do. And I know that whenever we don't plan out our meals, our meals for the week kind of get a little boring. So planning out your meals is definitely something that's going to help because you'll have all the ingredients that you need to make those dinners on hand. Um, I know it's a really simple tip, but it is really helpful. And when I don't do it, like I said, my meals are not always the best. So 
definitely start planning out your meals if you haven't already. I also know that a lot of us are stuck at home right now and have nothing but time, so this is the perfect time to start trying new recipes and getting creative, uh, especially if you're bored of eating the same old thing. <laughs> Please let me know in the comment section which of these meals is your favorite, if there are any that you really wanna try if you enjoy this video. I love your feedback. And if you do make something that I showed you in this video, please come back to the comment section. Tell everybody how it went. I am dying to hear. I'm dying for you to try these recipes. They are so good. Again, if you liked this video and wanna see more, make sure you hit that like button and let me know if you have any questions. That makes me feel like such a teacher. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. I promise I will get back to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've appreciated all of your support. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next one.